Someone asked me recently what my thoughts were on dating outside of my social class and I answered that I would quite literally never do that and here's why. This is something that is a requirement for me. It's not like, a, oh, I hope or maybe I will. I've tried it before. I'm not doing it. This is what I require and I don't think it's a lot to ask. Shit, I asked it of myself at 12 and look at where I am. I woke up like this. I woke up like this. We flawless. Ladies, tell them I woke up like this. Hello everyone, I hope you're enjoying your Sunday so far. I'm a little bit late talking about this, but I wanted to share this video with you. This beautiful woman, her name is Clark. She's very popular on TikTok. She went to Columbia. I think she still might be in Columbia. She's going to be a lawyer and she worked her way up. To get where she's at, she's very popular again on social media. She makes good money on social media. And she shared what her standards are when it comes to dating and basically why she will not date men who are not in, well, they don't make as much money as her. They're not as educated as her. They didn't work as hard as her. And this is just something that she's not settling for certain things. And it ruffled a few feathers. Now, there were a number of people and even some men who agreed with her. Some people who said, well, you do need to be equally yoked with your man. And um, some men upset again. We know anytime black women have standards and do not want to uh, date poor men, they get upset because there's such a huge amount of them but she doesn't just date black men at all. Also, it's just interesting to me because it's true what people say. A man will always bring you to their level. You can make $200,000, but if you want to be a stay-at-home wife and you don't want to work anymore when you get married, if your man makes $50,000, you no longer make $200,000. You are living off of his $50,000 and you will not live in a certain house that you wanted. You will not have your children go into a better school that you wanted. You will not be able to afford all, for all the extracurricular activities. You will not be able to shop at Whole Foods and have better quality of food. You will not be traveling the world every few months that you want it to do. You will not have certain outfits that you want. You will not get your hair done all the time. Your life is no longer going to be what you thought it would be. It Everything decision you make, if you get pregnant by the wrong man, just not being the right man or being a poor man, your children's lives are halfway destroyed and yours if he will not um, try to move up in the company or get better education or a better job or even two jobs. This is reality for women. And that's just what it is. People talk about dating on your level. Um, if I worked at McDonald's, I don't have to date and marry a man from McDonald's. It is not the same to me as when we are women. A woman can date a man who is more established on a higher level than her. Typically, when women do it, it doesn't always work out that great. And the man can resent you. I have seen this and it can cause problems. Not all the time. Some people can make it work. But she is saying what she wants and what she doesn't want. And she explained it. So I'm going to play the video. This is Clark Standards that ruffled feathers. She says, why I would never date outside of my social socioeconomic class. Okay, let's get into it. Someone asked me recently what my thoughts were on dating outside of my social class. And I answered that I would quite literally never do that. And here's why. For the purpose of this question, I took social class to sort of mean like socioeconomic class. So my economic status, maybe around how much money I make, the social status, like perhaps the caliber of school that I went to and the spaces that I found myself in as a result and the people I found myself surrounded by and then also like the lifestyle I've created for myself it's a combination of like the economic status and the school and the spaces and all of that I think you guys get how that fits together it's important to note that I did not grow up with a lot of money my father went to prison when I was four years old during that time and all the time after like my mom has been a public school teacher so they don't make a lot of money when we first moved to Atlanta we lived in a two-bedroom apartment with seven people sharing one bathroom like I literally shared the bottom bunk of a bunk bed with my second oldest brother and then my oldest brother and my sister-in-law were on the top bunk of that bed okay we were not a jack and jill family okay money was not 
we didn't have a lot of it. So knowing my circumstances, when I was like 12 years old, I made this vision board for myself. My mom actually found recently in her storage unit. I had basically carved out my entire life, like what I was gonna do in high school to make sure I could get into an Ivy League college, and what I was gonna do with that college to make sure I could get into a certain law school or buy a certain car and have a certain apartment or home, like all of these things I had planned out. And I knew that because my family didn't have the same financial resources someone else's did or access certain people to get me into doors, I had to open them myself. So that's what I did. I created an insane amount of opportunities for myself by literally putting my blood, sweat, and tears into everything I did. From the time that I was 12 years old until now, like 23, I was so intentional about every decision I made, whether it was not dating in high school or not drinking or prioritizing school or trying to get different scholarships. I did everything in my power to make sure that the life I was creating for myself while I was kind of stepping into the autonomy that I would have as a young adult, even as a teenager going into a young adult, being able to create the life I want to, that I was doing everything in my power to have something different than what I had growing up. And of course, I didn't have to do this. I didn't have to stay up all night applying to scholarships to earn over half a million dollars to go to college. I didn't have to apply to Columbia and do all the things that is required to get into a school like that. But I wanted to because I wanted to have a certain life. Even when it comes to content, when I started making content, I was taking 19 credit hours. I was working three days a week in office at my internship, but then I was also working with a tech startup virtually. And then I also started doing content and it was probably one of the hardest times in my life. But again, I knew that I wanted to set myself up for greatness and that is what was required. So knowing that, understanding how much work I put into the person that I wanted to be in the life I wanted to have, feels so unfair to me now and also to my younger self who was just so forward thinking and like put so many things on the back burner to prioritize the life that I would have right now. For me to date someone who cannot give me the life that I've always wanted, like they can't match it. I don't even need you to give it to me because I've already gotten it for myself, but if you can't be right there with me, it's not fair to me to lower my standards or accept certain things that I knew I never wanted to, which is why I work so hard on myself, just so that I can be with you. And it is not lost on me the fact that a lot of guys my age are just not gonna have what I have because I'm in a very unique position to make an insane amount of money for someone my age. And that's where the other part of the socioeconomic status comes in. I need to at least see that you have worked as hard as I have to put yourself into certain spaces to open up certain doors for yourself to go to certain schools or whatever it is because you have this intrinsic ambition and drive because you know that you also have your eyes set on the sort of lifestyle that I do and that is what you're actively working towards every day. Not having that does not make you a bum. It doesn't make you undesirable. It doesn't make you an unattractive man or anything. It just makes you incompatible with me and the lifestyle that I wanna have. I appreciate the drive that I have and the confidence that has been instilled in me because of all the things I've been able to do for myself and I really appreciate that and other potential partners as well. So if I'm really considering like seriously seriously dating someone not just like a casual date whatever this is something that is a requirement for me it's not like a, oh i hope or maybe i will i've tried it before i'm not doing it this is what i require and i don't think it's a lot to ask shit i asked it of myself at 12 and look at where i am okay hopefully you saw it. it it seemed to lag a little bit at the end of the video I hope you heard everything. This is her TikTok right there. I'm gonna zoom in if you would like to check out her page. I probably will post her, her TikTok pinned as the first comment, but I'm gonna play a video response, two video responses that I saw, and we're gonna get more into it. What I do have to say is that it's amazing that some men got upset, but she basically sacrificed since she was 12 years old she has done what she needed to do to get to where she's at at just 23 24 years old and to me she said it doesn't mean that you're unattractive or a bum but you're not compatible with me who i am my mind said yeah i don't think it's just about okay are you educated too it's about a mentality um, a lazy man who is not about nothing, being with women who are about something, women who knows what it takes to be able to live in this country, women who knows what it takes 
for their children not to suffer like her, sharing a two bedroom apartment with seven people, not having food. It is a mentality type of thing, wanting a man that is a go getter that will sat knows what sacrifice is that doesn't she she worked too hard she knows what she wants and she's not settling for any less she said i did it i worked i planned i sacrificed and i'm about it and i'm not going backwards so she's not dating a man we know what type of men she's talking about a lot of times it doesn't work and they often end up resenting the woman Okay, um, so I don't think she wants to be the full on breadwinner either. Maybe she could do a little, I don't know, but I don't think so. She wants a man that's up there like her doing, doing it, and that's gonna bring in the money just like her. And it's also a mentality thing. Believe me, it goes beyond just how much you getting paid a week. I'm telling you, it does. And the problems that typically come in you know, if you're a woman, I'm used to traveling. This is my life. She's a content creator. I travel. I go to events. This is how I'm making money. You don't want to be with a man who tries to lock you up in the house, trying to stop you from doing what you were doing when you met him, what your goals always has been and what makes you happy. You know, you know, like if you're a woman who likes to travel, which I do, yeah, you probably want to get with a man that likes to travel and not a homebody not compatible, tries to keep you locked up in the house, never wants to go anywhere. You have to fund all the travel constantly. Okay, so let me show some responses. Let's go ahead and keep it all the way real. The only ones mad at Clark and her strict standards are the ones that could never meet her standards and are thereby excluded from her dating pool. Or they're jealous. They ain't got what Clark got. And they know if they required the same kind of standards that Clark did, they never get nobody. They die alone. Let's keep it a stack. Let's keep it a stack. I mean, she really ain't said nothing out the way. Nothing crazy sounding to me. If I had worked my entire life to get to a certain level and provide myself a certain kind of lifestyle, why would I then not date somebody that would meet me where I'm at? Like you, use your common sense. And it ain't like she's hurting for offers. She got suitors. I followed Clark for a while. I've seen her dating content. Now, I will say, most of the time they do be white. I, I will say that. They do be white. But, I mean, that's just the spaces that she's in, more than likely. You date who you're around. So, I mean, can't really fault her too much. It really sounds like some hating shit. So, y'all ease up off her, bro. So Clark started this whole conversation about dating within your socioeconomic community and people were trying to tell her she's wrong. Angela came in and defended her and people were telling her she's wrong and that men don't care about that. Men in certain communities, doctors, lawyers, finance bros, they care and here's why. My ex is a finance bro. I remember the year that he cracked the ceiling and he had finally gotten to where he wanted to be. Like. I remember him getting the salary and we both being like, mind you, I was with this man since college. Um, we got invited to this exclusive um, Christmas party where we were the youngest, the blackest, and he was the newest. I remember walking in there, we did the usual, you know, greetings. And my son at the time might've been five, six months. I remember somebody grabbing my son me being pulled with the wives and mind you the wives were all accomplished women as well and my husband at the time being pulled with the men and for two hours we were separated and talking and the wives these women are making 175 200 this is five years ago okay on their own and their husbands are making 200 plus on their own so the conversations are not about baking cookies at all they're deep intellectual conversations and I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh. Like I literally back against the wall and I'm having to carry my own because again, my husband at the time is in another room having financial conversations. So they're on his head as well. And we're just talking like, you know, you have to make it casual, okay? make it seem like you're uncomfortable. And I wasn't uncomfortable. I have a gift for gab and I'm smart, but it was still like, you have to come into these rooms and be able to work these rooms these men are not picking dummies to date they're not picking dummies to marry now some i mean there's 
There's exceptions to the rule everywhere. But they're definitely worried about what your resume looks like as well. So I say all that to say, I um, was talking to a software consultant and an HR director months ago. And what they both complimented me on was the fact that they know that if I were to go to like a gala or an, an event, I would be able to hold my own. But also if they were to take me to the hood, take me around the way, I'll be fine too. So for these men that people want to date, you have to be able to do both depending on where they're from, depending on where they're from, what they're looking for. But just know that some of these men, I would say like 70%, they're looking for a woman to be able to compliment where they're trying to go. You got to be able to have those conversations. You got to be able to blend and network in these rooms. And remember, if you're in those rooms, you're not networking for yourself. You're really networking for him. And I mean, I hate to say it, but that's just the reality of it. So just think about that. Like, they're not lying what they're saying at all. It's actually more of the truth than I think women are willing to admit. And not for nothing, too. Like, you got to be cute. But a lot of those men are drawn to intellectually intelligent women. So. Okay, so you heard what she had to say as well. I mean, I do hear a lot of men saying that they don't always care about the degree that a woman has. And I think, I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. You know, I don't mind um, having a man that's way more educated than me and more established than me and many other women. But it's true. Um, they do want to be able to take you to events and you know how to speak to people. You know, because like she said, you are representing him too. You're representing him, the family, everything like that. And they want to know you have a little bit of sense, you know, not just looking cute, not just looking cute, but you have a brain as well. So people were curious to know about how does Clark make so much money, you know, at such a young age. I think she still might be in school. She's about to finish or she might have finished, you know, Columbia University to be an attorney. So I just wanted to play this clip of what Clark had told everyone. So this question is definitely number one comment that I get, I would say, on this account. And um, in short, basically, TikTok is my number one income stream. So I charge several thousand dollars for each sponsored post that I do. So in the last two months alone, I've earned enough money to cover my rent for the rest of my lease term. So that is the next 10 months. My rent every month is $4,000, uh, so over $40,000 just in eight weeks. I also get a lot of money from scholarship refunds. So I'm a junior at Columbia and when I was in high school, I earned over half a million dollars in college scholarships. So every semester I get anywhere from like $12,000 to $25,000 back in scholarship refunds that literally just get deposited into my bank account, no strings attached. I also released a digital planner at the beginning of the year and within a couple of weeks, I think I'd made over $10,000 from that. So that's another thing i don't i haven't tracked the exact sales from it um because i just don't really even consider that money like income but in theory that is money that technically i've made um as a result of doing TikTok, and it's certainly you know not a small amount of money so that's basically how i afford my lifestyle I will say my last apartment in this video, I was paying $3,300 a month for and I moved in when I was 19 and I was not doing TikTok at the time. I didn't start monetizing my content until maybe a month or two after I started posting, which would have been last summer. Um, but at that time I was working at a startup that was paying me really well. I also had lots of money saved and again, getting the scholarship refunds that are like tens of thousands of dollars, which is really enough to cover um, rent, which is what it's supposed to be used for is living expenses. So hopefully that helps. Um, and I hope that everyone who's ever asked this question sees this video because I get it all the time. Okay, so she is making her money, the scholarships, she knows what she's doing. So I don't see why some men got upset, but I, I knew that you would ex you would expect to see that certain men who want to date women, beautiful, in shape, dress nice, classy, and they feel like, oh, she's not going to date me because, well, you know, I'm not on her level just to keep it that way. You know, I'm not on her level. Who does she think she is? You know, especially when it's a black woman the so-called community expects you to date men who 
yeah, you might be nice, but realistically, if I don't want to live in an apartment off of your salary and I don't want to go 50-50, then it's not going to work, especially if you don't plan on trying to get more. And a lot of men don't want to be told what to do. They want you to accept them. And like she said, it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. I'm just not the one for you for what it is that I want. I have a responsibility not to myself, but also to my future children. And I don't live in what it could, I live in reality. What is it now? Where are you now? If I end up pregnant, this is what it's going to be. And that's just how it is. That's how life works when it comes to dating men. And like I said before, what someone else says, it doesn't matter. A man will always bring you to his level where women were going to usually submit. We're going to cook. We're going to be in the house. We're going to have kids. We're going to maybe not want to work anymore. And whatever he's making, whatever he's doing, that is your life. That is what your life will be. So you have a choice of what type of man you will and will not deal with. You know, some women want to work. Some women don't want to, or, or once you have kids, they don't want to, that happens. So what she said, okay, again, is that she created a lifestyle for herself. Her dad went to, to prison at four years old. Her mother was a teacher, didn't make much money. Okay, she lived in a two-bedroom apartment with seven people sharing the bunk beds. At 12 years old, she realized, oh my goodness, I can't, this can't be my life. I can't let this happen. So she planned her life. She had a vision board. She said, I want to go to an Ivy League school for law. She made that happen. Okay, she um, she's 23 now. She says, the key word she said is that she was very intentional. She avoided drinking and going to parties and doing certain things. She stayed focused on the goal. She says that she applied for scholarships. She managed to rack up over half a million dollars in scholarships. She worked like a dog, okay, just to be able to get everything she could to make this happen, to get to the point of where she's at now. Okay. I think she might've said something about even, you know, her circles and all of that. And she made it happen and she doesn't discriminate. Yes. She dates, uh, a lot of more than likely established men who are, are white men and, um, goes on dates. She's living her life. And it's good to know that, may the best man win is probably what her mentality is. Or maybe she just only likes white men. Who knows? You know that I find all races and men attractive, so I'm not against the swirl at all. But she's doing her thing. You know, she probably might even know what, what age she would like to get married or have children. And she's going just the way she planned everything out at 12 years old. She's going to try to probably reach that goal if she wants uh, to have a husband at a certain age and children and she probably knows okay what what type of men usually will marry type of thing may the best man win in this and um you know have certain things accomplished when she wants to, to start having children okay so that I, that's it for the video i want to know what do you feel about what she said because you have a lot of women who did just give certain men a chance or date certain types of men just only believed in love and didn't care about, you know, what your future would be for you and your children. And they live in regret now, you know, a lot of women, you'll hear them say, if I could go back in time, you know, and I've seen them saying, I'm definitely going to teach my daughter to operate more like Clark and what she's doing, being intentional for for your life and for your future and what you allow around you and, and everything like that. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And, um, you know, it's nothing to me, it's just different for a man and a woman. And men have even said that, you know, they don't mind dating a woman who is not on the same level, but that's because men are the providers and the protectors. It's just, they're the ones that's supposed to be leading us and leading the house. Um, in many ways and taking care of the family. You know, if she wants to quit, she needs to be able to have a man that would be able to take 
take care of her and her kids. And I'm sure she wants to pro- for him to provide the lifestyle that she was used to and worked hard for and the man that she's probably going to pair with. Okay, so, you know, Clark is doing her thing again. She's fabulous, feminine, fit friendly as they say right but she looks great and she's having fun with her life she's making her money as she says on tiktok but she's also doing her thing uh with her school so everything can work out for her and she looks great i just love this outfit right here i wanted to show this i love it she knows what colors you know look really good her body is on point and she's got it going on and she's doing her thing And I think that she's an inspiration, you know, at 23 years old to have accomplished what she's been able to accomplish so far and smart being able to to make her money off social media as well. Okay, and she's living her life, dating and having fun while still reaching her goals. So that is it for this video. I greatly appreciate you stopping by again. Please get the likes up. Please click the bell for all notifications if you subscribe. So you know when I'm live and when I upload. Enjoy your Sunday, everybody. Bye. And check out my, um, my announcement that I made in the community section. Bye, everyone.